What's up, Turtle fans? I am the White Foot Soldier, and this is an unboxing and review of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Secret of the Use Toka and Razor figures by NECA. What a great way to end a not so great year. Um, I came home from the store and this was sitting at my doorstep. So today's December. I'm not sure when I'm going to get this up, hopefully soon. Uh, maybe even today, but um, it's December 31st, 2020. We've all been through some crazy times this year. I uh, can't even believe the things that have happened. Uh, so to end 2020 on a high note is uh, pretty, pretty awesome, especially, you know, when it comes to these two, because these were uh, supposed to come out, if you recall, back in November. Uh, so to have these actually fall on the last day of 2020 um, is pretty crazy and hopefully sets us off into um, a great uh, 2021. So uh, the packaging, of course, we're gonna check out first. It just, it looks amazing. The box is so thick. Major kudos to NECA for um, the packaging as far as send or shipments go, because it, it came in this like, it was almost like a little, um, it was bubble wrapped and it was kind of like a little bubble wrap case. I've never seen anything like it. And it was uh, really, really great and protected the figure so well. Um, as you can see, there's not really any, you know, dings on this box because of that. Uh, so like I said, just wanted to give a shout out to Neko on that uh, part because a lot of times you get packages nowadays and they're destroyed. So um, not the case for this. Uh, so let's check out the um, box here. We get the window packaging. You can see all the goodness in there with Toka and Razor, um, the turtles down there with the TMNT Secret of the Ooze uh, logo up top there. Uh, quite a few accessories it looks like coming with these. Um, it's been a while since I even looked at the stuff online because I pre-ordered these so long ago. Um, turn over on the side and we get Toka over here. And you can see just how thick this box actually is. We get Razor on this side and then some really cool shots on the back. Um, you know, talks about the articulated facial features for Toka, which is uh, really, really neat. I'm looking forward to checking that out and some cool, you know, pictures with some of the turtles uh, with Toka and Razor. All right, let's go ahead and bust these guys open. All right, guys, here they are, Toka and Razor. Now, these figures are absolute brutes. I mean, the size of them and the weight of them, they are very, very impressive figures by NECA. Uh, but before we check out the figures, let's actually look at the accessories first because, um, again, these guys came with a lot of accessories, as do all of the TMNT uh, NECA figures. So, first of all, we get some hand swaps here, and we get two uh, separate sets for each figure. So, we get kind of these open uh, hand there on my left, and then this one's kind of more of a gripping hand. Uh, as you can see those nails, uh, some impressive work there. Um, and then a little fur on the backs there. And we also get this set that is uh, both pretty much closed. Um, this one a little, little bigger of an opening there. Uh, and the same kind of uh, detailing on these, um, some different uh, tooling on the knuckles. Uh, those, those fingernails, like I said, are, are impressive as well. Um, quite sharp too. And Toka also comes with some hand swaps as well. Um, so these ones kind of are a closed fist, I guess you'd say, not completely closed, but there's a little opening there, but it doesn't appear that any of the accessories that come with these guys would fit down in there. Maybe the one on the left here, it's kind of more of a circular uh, opening. You might be able to squeeze something down in there. But again, very impressive looking. We get kind of like the black looking gloves over top of the hands um, with some fingernails exposed and some different paint work down in there, you know, with the darker green and then some like black over top, almost, you know, with that reptilian look. And his second set of hand swaps, this one's more open, of course, you could grip onto something there. This one's a little more of a uh, better grip. Um, this one, you know, of course, is a little, little more open. So this one would probably be good for holding some of the accessories and whatnot. This set also comes with this piece of wood. Uh, it has some teeth marks in it. It's made of a rubber material. You can kind of bend it a little bit there. Uh, some nice detailing on it. Um, I initially thought it was the street light post that um, Toka, you know, takes a bite out of, but I believe he bites the back part of it. So I think uh, I'm sure this accessory has um, meaning to it, you know, with uh, it being included as NECA always does their research. Um, so uh, nice, nice accessory there, though. Um, kind of like the uh, bark on the back there. Uh, some nice tolling on each end uh, like it was snapped off. We also get a lead pipe. Um, it's very nicely 
painted. We get some black on there and you can kind of see some metal looking uh, paint through it. Uh, some line work on there to make it look, you know, dinged up and whatnot. Um, and actually, did I open the, no, I was gonna say it's not open the whole way through, is it? It's not hollow. Uh, just some openings on each side, but it doesn't actually go down through the whole way. So uh, this is neat. Of course, you remember uh, from the movie, you know, they bend one of them, one of them gets hit in the head with a pipe. So this is a cool accessory uh, that goes along with this set nicely and is accurate, of course. We also get a fire extinguisher. So this is a really uh, important part of the movie, if you recall, because they spray this down the uh, throats of Toka and Razor, um, and then they, you know, turn back into um, their pre-mutated states. Uh, so this is, this is like I said, a really neat um, accessory there. We get uh, the back part of there with kind of the hose that extends out. Um, it is plastic as well. And we need the uh, ooze, of course, Secret of the Ooze, TGRI, TCRI, of course, in the uh, original comics. But for Secret of the Ooze, if you recall, it is TGRI. And we get that crazy looking neon green, which is neat. We also get Razor's shield. Now, the shield's cool because not only does it look nice, uh, but it, you know, with some rust on there and whatnot. But if you turn it over, the handle part is not connected the whole way so that doesn't go down and you know connect right there and then you have to shove his hand in or try to take his hand off and whatnot um, that would just slide on nicely um, on his arm and you won't have to worry about you know losing um, you know one of the or breaking anything I guess I should say with either snapping those off or you know losing one of the the hands getting it stuck or something like that so uh, just a little detail there that uh, is really nice and something you don't see that often it seems like uh, if you look down through there it almost looks like it's corroded even um, down in the middle part there. So uh, again, some more rust on the back and it's bent actually down there too. And who can forget the pre-fight donuts. Now this is an eight pack, but actually it's short because it's missing uh, one that also comes with it and it comes with the anti-mutagen uh, capsule. So that's super cool. I mean, that's such an iconic uh, part of this movie and you can just kind of set that back on if you wanted to. You can see the green capsule there where it's discovered. Uh, you know, when they squeeze their hand and they see the capsules in there. So uh, that's so awesome. And then um, these donuts are kind of stuck together there and, you know, see some powder on them. And of course, they're uh, jelly inside, I'm sure. Um, so uh, a little bit of powder in the bottom there, too. So that's cool. And some darker brown, just really nicely painted accessories. And of course, you get the Simply Donuts box as well. So uh, these do fit in there. So if I just open that up and slide them right in, uh, they fit nicely. You could probably seal it up even. Yeah, you can seal that right up. So um, that's neat that they even, you know, made sure that it, they measured them right and that it fit uh, correctly. So we get Simply Donuts on all sides except the bottom there. Uh, so that's that's probably my favorite actually accessory with this just because that's that's such a, an iconic moment, as I said in the movie. Uh, one that, you know, everybody knows, um, that knows the TMNT. So uh, very, very nice. All right, and finally, let's check out the figures. So we'll start over here with Toka. Now, something that I noticed when I picked him up, um, he does have a lot of jagged edges. So you have to be careful because these spikes on the back are actually really sharp. And I'm gonna show those first because the detailing and everything is just amazing uh, when it comes to these. So that shell looks just incredible. All the different line work and the sculpt of it. Um, and the neat thing is these, these spikes are actually pliable. So you don't really have to worry about snapping them off. I mean, they could pop out because they're probably glued in, but you don't have to worry about them actually breaking. Like you should be able to glue them back in if one you know, would come out. But just look at all those spikes on there and they're all different sizes and shapes and uh, very sharp. Um, you even have some little ones down there and some of them with like bent tips and there's some, you know, different shading on them. And it just looks really, really good. That shell and like kind of the outer part of the shell looks so good. Uh, but that's something that I noticed right off the bat is how sharp that is. So it's a little bit hard to grab onto this guy. Um, so you almost need to grab him by the legs. Uh, but the overall appearance, um, the sculpt of this guy is just, I mean, both of these. Um, I know I say this a lot, you know, with this line when they come out, but as far as the movie line goes, I mean, these two are hands down my favorite. They look so good. Uh, very screen accurate. Um, the skin on this guy is reptilian. We get kind of the darker green and some uh, shading in there. Uh, some of the spots on his skin, his plastron almost looks like a burnt, um, you know, color there with some orangish yellow around it. 
and it just looks so realistic. And then that, you know, the shell wrap wrapping around. Uh, but look at the thickness on top of that shell too. Like that's just really, really nice. Uh, get the spikes on the shoulders, um, the elbow pads, and kind of the tassels, but they're kind of stuck to the elbow pad there. Um, those look like tires actually too that wrap around there. Get the, uh, some tassels hanging off his wristbands, um, some white you know tape on there. Um, this looks good. Those hands look great uh, with the gloves. Um, <clears throat> Again, more spots up up top there. And that face, that face is just dead on uh, with the beak coming out of there, some of the teeth on the side, the bloodshot eyes, uh, the you know spots there again, and kind of how that neck comes out. Um, almost looks like, like, a, uh, like a caterpillar almost, like how that neck comes out of there. And I think that we'll, we'll check out the articulation fully there, but I think there is some good movement up there as well. Uh, but moving on down to the hips, um, you know, some more spotting down there. Uh, the tire wraps around the knees, um, some tassels hanging off, the big calf muscles. Like, look at those calves. Like, those are just massive. Um, the wraps go the whole way around there. Uh, the looks like the joints are painted um, brown, but it doesn't look like it's peeling like it did for, you know, the Krang. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Um, those feet, too, just are awesome. They're just big and like look at the detailing even on the bottom you know we get some tolling on there we get the pegs uh the toenails i don't know if the toenails the toenails might actually just be pieces that are put in i don't know if they're sculpted right on um or if they were actually uh put down in there and then kind of sculpted over but um those look really nice they're dirty and grimy just how a turtle should be um so let's uh I think that we covered pretty much the fingernails. I think I mentioned that. We kind of covered the um, overall sculpt and paint. Um, and, and like I said, these guys are heavy. Like they've got some weight to them and they're, they're really nice. I'm a little worried about displaying them. They, they are standing pretty well in my um, little review area here. I'm just afraid, you know, with such big figures that they might fall off the shelf and, you know, hopefully not get damaged. But if they, you know, fall off the shelf, there's always that chance. But we got the uh, peg holes there. So, um, as I'd mentioned, so maybe I'll, you know, try to figure out something with that just because they are they are heavy and that shell's heavy, you know. But the legs feel pretty solid, too. Like, they don't feel like Krang where the lower body's very light and the upper body's heavy. Uh, so let's check out the um, articulation. And the first thing I want to point out is the... Um, like the eyebrows, like look at that. Like you can make him look like he was kicked in the in the cookies there. Um, moving it down, give him a more serious look. You knew the people's eyebrow. Um, sorry, I don't know if that was actually on there. Yeah, there we go. And uh, you know the mean look. Like I said, so those move around really nicely. Um, but just like some added detail like that is neat. You know, it's something that. Oh, I don't know if the beak's supposed to move like that. I didn't even mean to, but the beak's kind of moving. Um, so that kind of moves back and forth. I think the mouth opens too for this guy. Yeah, wow. Look how much the mouth opens for that. That's awesome. I didn't realize that it opened that far. You get the tongue and it's even painted up on top. You can see the different line work and things on the top of the darker, um, almost like you know, purplish red uh, mouth there. And it's kind of uh, like glossed over. That's really neat. And the teeth, all the different teeth there. There's teeth underneath the beak. Um, and then the bloodshot eyes, as I had mentioned. So it gets some rotation there around the head. I think that looks like that it should move. I don't know how, if it's really tight or not. I thought that that would maybe move up, but maybe it doesn't. It might just be really tight, I'm not sure. But um, the, the head moves, like look how far up that head goes. I'm gonna push that back so you can see it. But the head, it really looks up high. So that's gonna be neat whenever um, you know, you're posing them or doing some different pictures and whatnot, but the head really goes up high, uh, can go down. Now you can see when I'm moving it there, he doesn't have any waist um, movement. So he doesn't have, let me pull his arm up there. He doesn't have a waist swivel. So that, that shell and the plaster and everything does block that out, but he does still rock a little bit up top. And then we get the ball joint in the shoulder. Let me see if this one's a little more loose. Yeah. So the ball joint in the shoulder there, um, and then we get so, a lot of movement in the elbow too, I think if we can get that. Yeah, so that almost wraps the whole way around. If you do want to put a donut in his hand, he could you know, eat that. Uh, we get the, the wrists. Um, there's right below the elbow too. It's a little bit hard because he's got so many different, um, 
So many, and that swivels as well. So many different uh, parts like with the wristbands and stuff. Uh, but there is articulation there, as you can see the joints. Um, of course, you know, the hinges on the wrists and then that swivels around. Coming on down to the legs then, we get the ball joint and the hip. Now those are just massive legs. Look at the muscles on there too. The sculpting of that's incredible. Uh, moving on down to the knees. I think that those are, yeah, we get some above the knee and some below the knee. And wow, that really spins around. Oh blocking it with his other foot. So right above the knee and then below the knee. And then that really, like I said, swivels around there. Um, you can get a lot of movement with that. And then we get a hinge on the foot. So those big bad feet there um, that does move. It's tight. And then back and forth, we get a lot of uh, rotation there too. So, um, so yeah, this guy, oh, I just poked myself with, with the spike. But um, these guys, yeah, really, I think that both of them are going to have, you know, a ton of articulation. So on top of looking incredibly impressive, you're going to be able to move these guys um, and get some amazing poses. Uh, that shell is, uh, you see, yeah, so that just, that does just, you can kind of see down in there. Um, it's not real connected, so you can rock that pretty good and you get some nice uh, paint work there and some nice uh, sculpting. So, and underneath, check out underneath there, we get some neat... Uh, Neat sculpting, you can see the jaw. So yeah, it's a very, very impressive figure. So uh, let's check out Razor next. Now again, that sculpt is just incredible. Uh, these guys just look so screen accurate. Um, looking at the shoulder pads there, we get the black shoulder pads. Now those are rubbery, they move up and down. We get some tassels coming off of it. Um, that face sculpt is just sick. I mean, look at that thing. It looks like there is some gloss even around there, but it looks like it should just start drooling and it should start dripping down his face because that looks so good, um, so realistic. We get the blue eyes, uh, the fur around his face, there's big lips and his mouth actually opens up too and you can see some teeth there. Um, that are, you know, glossed over and his uh, mouth is painted inside and out there. Um, good uh, facial expression for, for Razor, of course. Get the big ears on him. Um, coming on down, we get the, the chest protector. It's like the grill of the car from the junkyard. I think it says Sino on it or something you know, at the top, S-I-N-O, I think. Uh, you can see it's even missing like a piece there. A little bit of rust on it. Uh, again, some tassels, you know, on, on each side, I should have pointed out. Uh, the fur on his body looks really good. Um, it's kind of similar to uh, maybe Splinter a little bit. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty rough and some different um, different color, different brown uh, shades, I should say, to make it look really good. So it's not just one color. Um, just really, really um, good looking figure there overall. We get the wrists. Uh, let me see, we get the... Um, Kind of like the tape on his wrist, I guess I should say, and they almost tassel off. Uh, moving on down, we get the loincloth. Uh, this is rubber. Actually, I think they're both rubber. And uh, we get some chains there in the front. You can see the tire uh, for the protectors for his um, thighs, and there's nails coming out of them. Um, so that's really neat looking. You get the tread from the tires. Uh, the knees um, have um, knee pads that are similar to the shoulder pads with like the tassels coming off and some metal on the sides. Looks like there's even some wraps underneath them there that are white and kind of like, you know, faded a little bit. Um, get a gauntlet here that's um, made of a tire with some nails again. Uh, those hands, as we pointed out with the hand swaps with the big uh, nails and then the fur kind of on the back and some nice detailing on the knuckles. Um, coming on down to the feet. Get some uh, big toenails there and kind of worn out or, uh, toes where it's kind of uh, kind of like a crusty brown, I guess you'd say. Something I noticed too, check that out. Like almost like he, they're worn from walking, you know, like the pads on the feet. Like that's really neat detail because that's something that you're not even going to see, you know, when this figure is um, flat. So NECA adding that extra detail then is really cool. We get the peg holes just in case if you want to pose this guy and those big toes. I mean, they're just thick. Um, chunky toes, looks like sausages. And we also get, um, you know, the, the crazy toenail on the bottom are uh, painted and, and just grimy looking as well. Um, turn him over in the back and you can see some more metal on his uh, shoulder pads there. Those chains wrapped around. They did a really nice job with those chains, um, you know, to, to have that uh, connect with everything and keep everything in place. Um, so I think that I think we covered the the sculpt and the paint um you know pretty well there 
can see again some different shading, almost like orangish on his calves, and again more big calves. Um, this stands really well too because of um, the pads. Like those pads I think actually help him stand well, so I'm glad that they put those on. I don't know if that was their intent or if they did it more so for the um, appearance, but that does help him stand really well. Uh, so let's check out the articulation next. And we'll start up at the head. We kind of already did uh, with the mouth there opening up. Uh, we get some good rotation around. Actually, that spins the whole way around. Uh, we get some good fur there. Um, moving on down then. Actually, here, let me, you guys would probably like to see how far up he can look. And he can look really far up. So let me move him back so you can see. Uh, he can look really high up. Um, always like a good range of motion there. Uh, moving on down to the shoulders then. We get ball joints in the shoulders now. The shoulder pads don't really hinder it because they are rubber and they aren't they aren't sculpted on. So they're just kind of hanging there. I think they're connected to, yeah, they're connected to the chain. Um, so you can actually move those arms around pretty good. We get, uh, let me move it on this side. We get two hinges on the elbows there. Um, so a lot of good movement that rotates. Uh, it wrist swivels um, back and forth there. So, Let's come on down there. He does have um, an ab crunch. So you can see it, let me lift his arm up there. You can see it right there um, underneath. He does have the ab crunch. So if you wanted to kind of bend him down a little bit, we do get some abs uh, underneath there too, underneath the, the uh, chest protector. Um, so yeah, so good ab crunch. You can be kind of have him, have him leaning over a little bit. Uh, moving on down to the legs then, we get some good rotation in the hip. Uh, same thing with the knee, I believe. Yep, so that goes up pretty high. You can see there, you can give a big boot. And then down in the ankles, we also get a hinge. And after the hinge, then he also rocks uh, pretty well back and forth for the foot. So, um, so yeah, a ton of articulation on these guys. Always tight when they're out of the packaging. I'm always a little nervous. Uh, so be careful with them. You know, use a hairdryer if they're feeling way too tight. Uh, obviously, that's a little difficult when you're reviewing, like myself right now, but um, just try to be careful with them because they are tight and some of them are even painted over, uh, which makes them, you know, even more tight. Uh, so, so there they are um, side by side. Now let's do some size comparisons uh, with some of the other figures. And let's start off with uh, Leonardo from the movie line of NECA figures. Uh, so he, he matches up pretty well, I think, because they are big in the movie, but I don't know... Um, like I'm gonna have to go back and actually look. I think this is a pretty good scale for them because um, you know they're more bulky. Like Toke always came across as more of a bulky turtle um, and not super tall. Uh, so like I said, I'm gonna have to go back and pay attention to the scale more and see. But I think that it looks really good uh, lined up to them there. Uh, so that will make for some great pictures. And here they are with a Foot Clan member. So you can see the Foot Clan's pretty tall. Um, goes up to about eh, just under the ear there, I would say. Um, so uh, I think that probably matches up again uh, pretty well. And of course with their mama, uh, Shredder, so you can see how he kind of matches up with them. Um, again, I'm gonna have to go back and look, but I think that these guys look pretty good because of how uh, bulky they are. Of course, Shredder's a skinnier human body. Um, these guys are just big brutes, muscular bodies. So, um, but again, I, I think he looks good next to them. Here, I just tried on the uh, shield for Razor, and that really uh, fits on there nicely because it's pretty tight. You can kind of see down in there. I just put it around his hand and around his uh, forearm and it fits pretty nicely. I think it's a good size. Um, that's something I'll probably just leave on him. And since it's probably my favorite accessory, there is the um, anti-mutagen capsule inside of the donut. You can see it fits really well inside of Toka's hand there as if he would just crush the donut uh, to show that um, you know the turtles were indeed tricking them and that they were not providing them with some pre-fight donuts. They were indeed trying to turn them back into their pre-mutated forms. Um, so that wraps things up, guys. What a way to end 2020. Um, again, ending it on a high note is something I did not anticipate happening, but um, it looks like that we are going to end on a high note because we got these two. Uh, major props to NECA, always doing such a fantastic job. Can't wait to see what comes out in 2021. I am the White Foot Soldier. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe, hit that like button, and thank you so much and Happy New Year.